It's no secret Borderlands Enhanced was disappointing to a lot of people, me included. As a remaster, it checks the bare minimum of boxes as well as missing key features and having a game-breaking data leak that to this day has not been fixed. So I thought, in a perfect world, what would this Borderlands remaster look like? What's going on? I'm Cashew, and this is my dream Borderlands 1 remaster. Before we get properly started, I should probably lay down the ground rules for what I consider a remaster to be. A remaster is the same game as an older version, but has enhanced graphics and added content like quality of life features. This is different to a port, which is just the same game on a different system, or a remake, which is a completely different game just based on the first ever version. In this video, I'm going to hold myself to the limitations of a remaster, so no cutting parts I don't like or adding in new missions. That being said, as per usual in these dream videos, most of this will be a pipe dream and probably too hard to develop. But with all that out of the way, let's get into it, starting with the main meat of the remaster, the feet. Before Borderlands Enhanced, fans were only really asking for four things in a remaster. An FOV slider, a minimap, fast travel and DLCs, and moving in fight for your life. All things that the sequel did, and in theory, shouldn't be too hard to add. Obviously, I say in theory, because there's no way of knowing how hard it actually would have been for Blind Squirrel to add these things in. They ended up only able to deliver on the two former. The latter features were axed entirely, which was uh, shocking, to say the absolute least. Being able to fast travel in DLCs alone would have put this above the original Borderlands, even in spite of the data leak. The amount of time that you would save is incredible, which would also lead to a lot of people playing content they've never seen before. That last part may sound strange, but it's true. I'd argue that the vast majority of people who play BO1 have never really been too bothered with a DLC side quest because of how long it takes to get to each location. There are whole mission chains in the Sunken Sea that I bet you don't know about, like Thirsty the Midget's questline that ends in farming a unique boss in the form of Sledge's dead limbs powered by a metal machine named Motorhead. He's also the drop source for the chopper, by the way, if you didn't know. There is so much more to the game just by making these areas that much more accessible. And I mean, if we have the technology, why not do a Borderlands 3 and let you respawn at the closest new use station every time you save quit? The other feature I mentioned there was moving and fight for your life, and as a quality of life feature, this would help so much. Getting stuck behind a barrier or in an enemy in fight for your life would most likely lead to an unfair death, so it's a no-brainer to add for me. Another welcome change would be to add a variety of dedicated drop sources for legendaries. A big problem with endgame farming in BL1 is that the only way to get legendaries is to get them as world drops. So all the endgame farms are very repetitive and pretty similar. Now don't get me wrong, I love the armory and gift shop, but adding in dedicated source for most guns would spice up the endgame and make it a lot easier to experiment with different guns. There are a lot of guns that people have probably just never used because of how rare they are than other legendaries. Guns like the Draco, Nidhogg, Chimera, and Cobra drop a lot less frequently compared to Equalizers, Volcanoes, and Hellfires. Some other quality of life changes I like to have done are adding a toggle for NPCs telling you that their mission is available. As funny as Marcus's line read of T-Bone Junction is, uh, they get really annoying after a while and I, have, I need it to stop. <laughs> Others to add would be a way to inspect guns, a toggle for classic and new inventory UIs, having meaning field customization options rather than just four heads unlocked at spawn, class mod buffs now showing up on the skill tree, and finally, a photo mode. It may sound a little bit odd, but the amount of times I've wanted to take a good BL1 screenshot but just couldn't because of like damage numbers or the HUD or enemies moving too fast is crazy. And I don't want any of this BL3 photo mode jank. There should be no limit to how far the camera can go, and when exiting, the camera shouldn't just drag behind. That shit's so annoying. <laughs> Something that actually just needs to go entirely is this bullet stun that is seen in the game. I, I don't know why it's here. It was removed in later games, and if we're remastering the game, I feel like we should get rid of it. Those are about all the main features I want to add in a Borderlands 1 remaster, but I want it to be thorough. So I asked my subscribers what they would add, and a lot of them agree with me with adding a fast travel in DLCs, dedicated drops, and NPC dialogue, but a few did have some pretty unique responses. A lot of people mentioned buffing vehicles to give them more boost and armor, which I'd be so down for. Another really good one would be buffing the hell out of the Iridium weapons seen in the game. I would love to see a way to actually make a build around them for one. This one guy asked for mod support on console, and if it's a dream remaster, then yeah, add that in. A few people also did suggest adding sliding and mantle mechanics, but I'm not really sure about this since Borderlands 1's game design wasn't really built around being able to climb anything, so I wouldn't personally include mantling, but sliding is cool though. And in that same comment, they mentioned adding in some playable character dialogue, which is actually a really good idea. It would help the story so much. It might sound a little odd when directly contrasted with the old compressed voices, but it would be amazing if they somehow figured that out. But now that I'm done with the features I want added, it's time to talk about the system.
So we know systems is kind of an odd name for this section, but to explain, it's basically everything that should be added that isn't a physical feature to the game. One example, first is the graphics. This is the most immediate thing that a remaster can hit you with, and for what it's worth, Enhance did this pretty well. It's important that the overall art direction is respected and not covered over by a bunch of bloom in an attempt to make it look quote unquote better. Stuff like updated assets and enemy models would be awesome, as some of the old bandits and creatures can tend to look a little dated. Even updating the models for a lot of guns would go a long way. Because though the team at Blind Squirrel did try to make the UI better by making you be able to see the gun's appearance in your menu, the models were never updated, so it kind of just ruined the new look of the inventory, at least for me. Not to say that I blame them for this though, making new models for that many different guns is obviously too small a thing to focus on for how much time and resources they had. But this is the dream remaster, so I would really like to see that. Next, I want to make a few tweaks to the weapon proficiency system. For those who don't know, the proficiency system was a mechanic that increased your stats with certain gun types the more you use them. A lot of people swear by this system and even want it to return to the next Borderlands game, and though I agree, I'd like to see a few changes. First, the bonuses should only be additive. A few weapons, namely sniper rifles, had accuracy tied to this stat, which made the gun randomly miss if you didn't have much proficiency in it. I also think that when you level up, you should also get one proficiency level for all weapon types. This ensures that while the guns you use the most will be what you're best at, when you decide to use a different gun type, you won't have to start from square one. While proficiencies were seen as a good thing by most players, what wasn't was the boss fights. Namely, the final boss, the destroyer. But before we get to that mess, I want to talk about boss fights in general. In Borderlands 1, boss fights didn't have much fanfare at all, unless they had an intro card, but even those who did sometimes felt kind of pathetic. Like, as an example, the first boss, Nine Toes, has a pretty present threat over the first minutes of the game if you're reading into the missions. You save Zed from his grunts, you take the fight to a nearby camp, and then you storm his base in the Skag Gully. But because it's an early game boss, you can basically just one-shot him. I honestly think that bosses like Nine Toes should be buffed, as well as putting the health bar at the top of the screen. Something as simple as that can change the way you go about the fights, and it makes it feel a lot more important. But getting back to the pig of humanity over here, the Destroyer was a very thrown together at the last minute boss, and it shows in the gameplay. This was due to it being the very last thing the team had to work on, as the game was due to ship like any day at that point. So as it ended up in the original, it would sit there as you shoot it as a wall of health, and halfway through it grows arms that don't do anything. This fight is so bad that one of the main things that the Blind Squirrel remaster wanted to focus on was fixing this fight. Or at least that's what the pre-launch interviews wanted us to think, because the fight is largely the same. Like, don't get me wrong, they added a few racks and made him a bit more aggressive as well as actually having some loot as a reward, but they hype this part up so much and it's pretty similar. Changes I would make to the boss is to first of all give them less health, but make them only damageable through their limbs that have crit spots on them. When you break all four, the destroyer will momentarily be stunned with their eye and mouth open, letting you deal damage by pouring ammo into their crit, being the eye, and throwing grenades in their mouth. The second phase with the arms could release a few guardians to fight at the same time, while also unlocking the destroyer's eye laser move. I'd like this to function similarly to the Eye of Helios attack from EOS in the pre-sequel. For a moment before the eye laser shoots out, the player will be able to hit the crit spot, being the eye. But going for this crit puts you in danger of getting hit by a very devastating attack. Because really, if this fight needs anything, it's a reason to move around and some risk versus reward. Adding on to the former there, we should also add a lot more ammo containers at different parts of the map to incentivize movement. You know, as well as also just having more ammo, because that was a huge issue during the OG fight. Like I said at the beginning, though, not a game designer, nor a boss designer, so take what I say here with an incredibly large grain of salt, please. Before we're done here, I do have a few more features and mechanics that I wanted to touch on, but didn't really fit in this section, so let's get into the miss- this section's largely just going to be rapid fire, so let's get into it. Cormax's elevator needs to be sped up like a billion percent. It's way too slow in the original. Having the correct gun level shown in the inventory when equipping guns. Fixing rarity glitches for guns like the Draco and Penetrator. Fixing incorrect names showing up on guns, like how the Malawan shotgun, the Plague, is called the Crux by accident. Adding in a lot more ammo vendors. Only have medkits take up one inventory slot so they don't clutter up inventory. Let the Claptrap backpack has to use be guaranteed we're completing the side quests in both playthrough 1 and 2. Add in a separate claptrap stash in the underdome so that you can move items between characters keep all hybrids intact removing none not including the gearbox legendaries but keeping the golden chest just to give the game a reason to be acknowledged by gearbox years after release not fixing any movement tech glitches like bricks run lures phase jump or roll and duplicating grenades removing or speeding up the weapon ready animations, better online play experience, and having a tracker for how many backpack SDUs are left once you beat the game. So, 
In conclusion, we want updated graphics that retain the art direction and style of the original, an updated proficiency system, and better boss fights. For the main features, we want a minimap, FOV slider, moving and fight for your life, DLC fast travel, dedicated drops, toggle for quest callouts, photo mode, console mod support, overhaul of vehicles, Iridian buffs, the misc improvements mentioned, and better movement in the form of sliding. This was a really fun video to make, and I'm pretty happy with everything I've been able to come up with. What's actually really cool about this, though, is that a lot of these features that we want in the game already have mods to fix it. There's a fast travel DLC mod, a dedicated drops mod, and quite a few different mods that let you change your FOV. I'll leave the mods mentioned as well as the general Borderlands 1 mods page in the description for anyone who's interested. And that about does it for today. Let me know if there's any other features you'd like to see for a Borderlands 1 remaster in the comments, as well as anything you may have disagreed with me on. But thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I'd really appreciate a sub and... Let's do the channel member shoutouts. My channel members are JBH, who met the Pelican Tamer in their prime. Lucky. Wesker520, who can perfectly mimic phone sound effects with their mouth. They just spend most of the day fucking with people. Angel B, who was wanted for murder in several countries. Wait, what? Jimmy Scrimby, who was voted most likely to eat a flamingo in high school. Hasn't happened yet, but it will. Jaden H, who found their passion in the form of an underground mosquito fighting ring. Noah Rollins, who has shoved a plate of steel into their forehead so that they can be protected from mental attacks and also bullets. Handsome Frank 63, who opens their house door by flip kicking their key in. It's, it's fucking sick. Carlo McGuinness, who despite what everyone says, still uses VHS tapes. I can't help but respect the hell out of him for it. I have no idea why. And Dryptofan, who is known as the Seahorse Savior in his own town. No clue why though, they're in like Austria, there's nowhere near the water. And also, Vince but just the hat, who spent 91 days exiled on a remote island, only surviving off one natural resource. Bones. Wait, bones? And finally, Deck, who has broken many world records in all fields from speedrunning to sprinting, but has never submitted any times because they don't want to take anything away from the current record holders. What a nice guy. Thank you guys again so much for the extra support. No matter how many times I say it, it will never be enough. If you want to join the legends on screen, you can by clicking the join button below the video. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.